Right, on to a bit of uh, maintenance on the A5 before we get to the track day. So, these are the discs that we had, and I'm not sure if we ever had them in a million bits like they are now beforehand, or we just showed them when they were on car, I can't remember. But basically, we just, because these are floating discs, that it's done to spar ring, back, donning turn, another donning turn. I uh, can't think what else we've done. We've done a fair few track days in this car, a good few thousand miles. So it's a good chance, it's a good time really for us to check these and not wear in any way, because they are a wear item. Usually I think on our beef for track car, we're probably about a third set of pads and discs have still got some life in them, but they generally say you want to change your bobbins and check your wear. But we'll just have a quick look at what these discs and pads are, how much they've worn, for how many miles they've done, and then you can make your own mind up whether they're better or worse. So this is a, a floating disc arrangement. So we had these bells machined to suit these discs. These discs are from the British touring cars, which brand new, these are 36 millimetres wide. These are part one, because they change them every race pretty much. I think they bed them in, change them every single race. But if you look here, that is the minimum depth that they'll go to, which is, it's about 27 mil, so it's absolutely tons. So I don't think you'd wear that much off them and be happy anyway. But these ones, when we got them, which that's one, how we got them before we started using them, that wore only 0.3 mil wore off it. Now, after all that mileage that we've done, we've wore 0.75 mil away from it. So not a lot. You've still got probably another three or four mil before you'd be worried to come off them. But the value aren't at all. So that one of the reasons I wanted to strip them, we made these at a 7075 aluminium. We wanted to check that these bobbins, which is what these are, these are wanted to check that these were not wearing, because what you do, that goes in here like this. I'm doing it sort of reverse of what it should be. They don't just sit on front like this, but that'll go in there like that, and then you tighten it up. You put your tighten your nut up on there. So what that allows is, I didn't really want to be walking about, but we'll, uh, we'll do it in this order. But what that allows on the car Is this float here? So I don't know if you can see it very good. You might see it better if you look inside there. So if anybody's ever drove a track car or a race car before that's got floating discs on, they sound absolutely shocking because whenever you've not got your foot on brake, the the disc and the belt are chattering away because what that's to do. Obviously, you've got a big caliper. These have got individual pads, but they've gone away from that again now on sports cars for various reasons but if you've got a big pad like you've got like a 10 pot or 8 pot 6 pot whatever the deflection in your wheel bearing which obviously your disc moving now but you've always got deflection in your wheel bearing that'll knock your pad back so on like if you hit a curb like in, in our beef with the old discs that were solid discs if we hit two or three curbs and then got to end it straight went for brakes, your pedals right at the bottom, you have to pump it and then back up so you'll see some racers will left foot brake and uh, bring the pads back to disc before they go for it on straight, which if you forget to do that, so you end up crashing. I've come off doing that before. So anyway, we'll go back over to discs and pads. So at the same time as fitting these used discs with the new bells that we had machined, with the new bobbins, we also fitted the Padgid RS29 pads. So part of the maintenance we were going to do today, we're fitting new ones, which these we have to skim and mill off each pad to get them to fit with these 36 mil discs. A, bit, a little bit warm. But the plan is to offer a kit. It's a bit difficult because they're not exactly, you can't buy these in any other width with this arrangement. But the plan was to get some 34 mil discs, which means you can just drop these straight in, but anyway, it's by the by. So, new, these are 
pretty much 17 mil. So we've machined these down about a mil and took a little bit off here because of version one of this. We're a little bit bigger than we wanted it to be, but we didn't want to sacrifice any strength. But we've changed radius on there and that doesn't really matter now, we just did that anyway. But, so these are nearly 17, we've got these down at 15.75. So we were going to change them for some new ones. But when we've had a look, the look, <laughs> the yellow's all gone. And you get all these surface cracks anyway, that is, it is what it is. It's normal. These are 15.2, so we've only wore off three and a half mil from these pads. So we can do another, before we're down to the metal, roughly, try not to be, we've got about six and a half mil left. So we've probably wore off, if we're being realistic, these are probably not even half worn yet and they've had some proper, proper abuse. Like every time we're breaking on edge of ABS kicking in, sometimes it was kicking in. There's not really much in way of brake ducting on this other than the make and ducts. We couldn't get anything better with the old bumper set. We might be able to now, but we couldn't get anything better than that. So really happy with brakes. I'd expect to change pads well before now, and we, we reckon we're going to get at least this day at Castlecombe, if not, that day and maybe some more road use on them but you don't want to wait until they're completely gone especially if you're racing because more meat you've got in your pads the better nobody ever wants to lose a race because the the brakes have gone by end of session but if they start to go when we're there we've got some new pads that we can just throw in we know the discs are all right they don't need to be done so i'm happy that we've done the maintenance we need to do so i'm probably going to sneeze in a minute so i might have to cut a bit out but we'll see brake dust not good for you so one of the other things that we've got, I don't know whether we want to get a bit of packaging, just so it looks a little bit more photogenic. Sorry, Paul. So a bit, the packaging's a little bit misleading because you've got 16, 14, 16. These are actually the Bilstein B16s, what we've got for this now. I was never happy with the shocks that were on there. The springs always seemed a little bit hard and the shocks never seemed to dampen how we wanted them. So we mentioned project to Bill Stein and they said, we'd love to help you out. We'll send you the kit that will reduce cost if you can uh, let us know what difference, it's gonna, what difference it's made to you. So we're not planning on going to a track that we've already done before this weekend, but we will do shortly after. We'll try and get to Donington on an evening track there or something like that. And we'll definitely be able to see the difference in lap time. But the main thing that we're going to notice with these, I'm sure, because we've got this same kit on our Ibiza, we replaced uh, an e-back kit which had been on there years and put these on. And the difference were unbelievable. And these, these uh, coils that are on here are not as good as uh, e-back or anything like that either. So... We should see a massive difference. The B16s, they're nice. I'm sure these look like stainless, but they're probably not. They're uh, just nice nickel, nickel plating. Um, nice damper bodies. Inverted strut. So that means you've got a big fat piston here and the actual small piston that you'd normally see, sort of that sort of diameter, that's inside here. So these are a lot stronger. You're not going to bend them as easy. Um, and these, yeah, nice big adjuster knob that's easy to see because what you find with a lot of these type of suspension is it's very hard. They've got 50 point adjustment and usually you're all the way at the top and you're trying to uh, figure out where's best. These, fairly straightforward. What we've got is 10, adjust 10 points of adjustment. Nice little indicator on there where we're going to be. These are set at one. I think we know it's going to be on track. We'll probably set this, set it halfway to start with. Number five. Yeah, that one's set at one. Get up to number five. And these, in theory, should be fairly straightforward to adjust. Oh, look what the rear ones are. 
a nice boot covering these. I don't really want to pull it off. But yeah, it's, a, it's not an inverted damper in there. It's a small, uh, small shaft on that. So yeah, tested on the Nurburgring Nordschleife. So when we go back there at some point this year, which I'm hoping we can, we'll let Misha drive it and he'll tell us whether the, uh, the upgrade, this upgrade of suspensions actually works. But we should have a bit more of an answer at the weekend. So these springs, uh, their numbering is not the same as e -back. So what I'll do, Paul unboxed this before I got here. So I'll get the numbers off these uh, springs go on the Bill Steen website and I'm going to see what it compares like to what's on here. So when I'm doing road test, I'll, uh, I'll have a little bit more information on uh, whether these are harder or softer. I'm assuming, just looking at them, them rear springs are softer, which is not a bad thing. And I think the fronts are going to be very, very similar. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's see how we get on. And... Uh, you can see Paul throw all this together and we'll get it on alignment again. Make sure it's somewhere near. Comes a fast circuit, very dangerous. A lot of crashes you'll see. Um, I think probably one of the most famous ones, Simon Norris stacking it. I think he's done it a couple of times. Launched his car nearly all the way over a catch fence, so we'll insert that in. Um, it's a very, very fast circuit. We don't want this to be twitchy there, so we're probably not going to go any more aggressive on the alignment settings than we have done before on this. Whether we do at track, I'm not too sure. But we're going there to come home. We need to drive home. We're not going there to set any lap records. So, yeah, see how Paul gets on. Perfect. Right then, we've just got the uh, Bill Stein suspension fitted and all sorted. Fairly straightforward job to be honest, no trouble at all. Got the alignment done, we've gone pretty much parallel all round, which if you remember, this had loads of towing until we changed the rear arms. So that's what makes this really 
really nice on track and feels good on the road. So we've got parallel all round, couple of degrees of camber roughly all the way around, which that seemed to work last time we are at track and when we were at the ring. The damping adjustment on this is set to five on the rear, six on the front. And these Bilsteins are absolutely perfect. The knobs have got numbers on them, the little dot lining up to it and you just click, you know exactly where it is. Not messing about like on some coils where you're just winding them all the way down, then backing them off and you forgot where you are on this 30 points of adjustment, it's a pain. These are good. So there's a few little bits inside that we've not mentioned before we go on a road test. Make sure I don't uh, sit on that camera. So <coughs> seats are black with some red stitch and they've been in for a while. So we've got Emily at Lux Automotive to do some Alcantara red stitching on armrest and on gear gator. The gear knob's still the original one. To be honest, I'd like to uh, change that for something else, but we'll see what comes up. And then onto the, the best part. This is from Satnav Deals on eBay. We'll put a link in comments as well. In description, should I say? I always say that. This is really nice, exactly what we needed for the car. It's been such a while since we sorted this out. Well, these got done and then getting this, we've literally only just got it because we bought some off a guy, a Polish guy, I think he's in Ireland. And he got our steering wheel, made it flat bottom, retrimmed it, he made it really fat and horrible. All the stitching was rubbish. We sent it back to him, just said, look, we're gonna mention it on a video. We want it to be right. We didn't get it any cheaper, I don't think, and he just kept it. Didn't send it as back, didn't answer his email, so eventually got his money back. Obviously, he still got our steering wheel, I think. Eventually he replied and gave us 50 quid for the steering wheel we paid, 150 quid for, so we've lost money on that. We'll mention his name on here. We're not putting a link there because I don't want to I don't want to help him out, but we'll mention his name on here. So if you see, see him on eBay, avoid him. He's doing loads of flat bottom stuff, so he deserves not to get any business, to be honest. Um, so yeah, we'll get this camera banged on because I've just put window down and knocked it off and uh, we'll go for a drive, see what it's like. So, this steering wheel <coughs> feels really nice. One thing to note on the suspension as well, we thought it would because we were running a fair bit of camera and we were quite low, but the other suspension made some horrible noises when you're turning. But I'm not noticing any of that now. It feels feels bang on, no clunking, banging. So already one point to Bill Stein compared to the old coilovers. Yeah, that steering wheel feels miles nicer. And I get stuck in a bit of traffic. So I've got to have window up so this camera can be here, which up until yesterday it had been really annoying but we finally got the aircon gassed in here so when Danny and Paul are driving this down to Coombe they'll, um, they'll not be burning up like I have every time I've drove it so far so first impressions I can still hear them the discs rattling Every person that drives this car or passengers in it asks what that noise is, but that's what you get for fitting motorsport floating discs to your road car. They rattle about a bit. Not going to cause any problem, that's what they're designed to do. So the ride quality, can't believe how much better it is. It's still firm, which we set at number five. We can obviously set it a bit lower. We can set it a bit... Uh, softer than that if we want to but what I always say if your car rides really 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 well on the road when you get on track it's going to be too soft you want to be firm not not harsh but firm on the road and that's that's where you want to be for track it's really cornering really nice and flat just try to uh, not with two mad round here. Yeah, it's really, again, a nice bite on turning. And this is still 
It's still on road tires. So that is nice. The suspension that running before on the track, I thought were okay. Obviously, time will tell whether this is um, this is better. But I could tell straight away. It's definitely not as harsh. It's firm but not harsh. And it's cornering really flat. Okay, chuck it into the surrounded a little bit. Traction control were happy then. Yeah, that is good. It's really good. And obviously on a car that's got as much grip as this and as much power as this torque as well, you need to make sure you're not squatting and pitching all over. Because when you're braking, you don't want to pitch and have no weight on your back end and you don't want to go for power and squat on the back and then you've got no steering input, so I'll see what that feels like. Yeah, hard on brakes. Them brakes are good. I'm really glad we took it upon ourselves and listened to some of the comments that people are saying, just please upgrade them. I think the S5 brakes would have been fine for what we're going to do here, but these are next level, they are, they work so good and never, we've never even had them fade, it's unbelievable, every car we've ever had, they've not got brake ducts on fade like that, and definitely something rattling around in the spare wheel well, which is annoying, yeah, really happy with this, really looking forward to driving this at Castle Cool, so, I think this concludes a road test. Thank you very much to Bill Stein for offering us the suspension. Thank you to everybody for the interior stuff. Thank you to everybody in the uh, workshop for making this car happen. If you're liking what we're doing, share it, subscribe, comment, I will answer all your comments. And uh, the full spec list of this car's below. We're probably gonna do like a summary video while we're at Castle Coon and then there might be some other YouTubers meeting up with us there so cheers.